Hello everyone, my name is Marcelo and this video will learn how to fill data on the waveform with the data from an Excel file with YPath. So we have here a form and I will share the link for this form on the description of this video so we can follow this tutorial. And so we will create automation that will read data from this Excel file. And so for each row of this Excel file, our automation will input the data on each field. So we'll put the name on the field name, uh, the age on age, and so on. And then we'll click on the submit button. And so we'll do this process for each row. So we'll submit the data of each row here on our web form. So let's start with our automation. So what's the first thing that our automation should do? So our automation first should read the data from this Excel file. So extract the data from this Excel file so we can use the data during the automation. So uh, for that, so let's go to iPath Studio. Let's use an activity that extracts data from the Excel file. So let's click here on activities and let's search for read range. And so we can see here two read range activities. Let's use the one from workbook. So let's drag this activity to our sequence. And so this activity can extract data from an Excel file. So first we just have to provide the path to the Excel file. So let's click here and let's indicate our Excel file. Then we have to indicate the name, the sheet name from which we want to read the data. So we can see that it's sheet one, so we don't have to change here. And then here, so the range, so here we can specify uh, from where we want to extract data from the Excel file. So in this case, we want to read the whole data. So we just have to uh, give, so leave this uh, property empty. And so by this way, our activity will extract the whole data from the Excel file. Then make sure this uh, property uh, is checked. So the property add headers. So by this way, uh, white path will consider the first uh, row of our Excel file as the row of the column names. So now we just have to create the variable that will uh, so contain the data extracted from our Excel file. So here on output, let's click here. And now let's create the variable. And now let's give the name dt underscore waveform data. And so we have already created our variable. So now if we run our automation, this variable should have the data here from the Excel file. So let's just see uh, if it happens. So let's here use a right line activity and let's here open double quotes and let's just type in Excel. So I'm just using this activity so we can here toggle a breakpoint. And so if you run now our automation in debug mode, the automation will stop here and then we can see the value so that contains our variables. So let's run our automation in debug mode. So make sure you click here on the option debug. And now as you can see, our automation stopped here and we can see here the value of our DT waveform data variable. So if you click here, we can see that it contains the data extracted from the Excel file. So our automation is working as it expected. So let's just stop our automation and let's just delete here the right line. So after we get the data from the Excel file, we have to open the browser on the web form. So uh, for that, let's use the activity use application browser. So 
uh, this activity allows us to open an application or browser during the automation. So let's so let's drag it after the read range activity. And now we just have to indicate the application to automate. So let's click here on indicate application to automate. And now let's go to our browser and make sure the browser is already open on the web form. And so now we just have to click. And as we can see, WebPath extracted the URL of our web form. So now, if we run our automation, so let's just close the browser and let's run. We can see that automation opens the browser and then closes. So let's just remove the close part. So let's click here on our activity and then we can see here the property close. So by default, it selected the option if opened by app browser. So that means that if this activity opens the browser, it will close it then, on the end. So let's just select here the option never, so by this way, this activity will not uh, close the browser. So let's just test. And as you can see, our automation finished its execution, but we still have here our browser open on the web form. So now we have to create a loop, so create a cycle, for each row of our data table. So by this way, for each row, we will do the same actions. So in this case, it's fill the data on each field and then click on the submit button. So to create a loop for each uh, row on the data table, we have to use the action, so the activity for each row in data table. So as you can see here, the activity, so let's drag this activity for here. And so we just have to indicate the data table that we want it to rate the rows. So we want it to rate the rows of this data table. So let's indicate here the name of our variable. And so now inside of our for each row, we have to perform so the activities that will input the data and click on the submit button. So here we have also access to the current row. So uh, with this uh, variable, let's say, we have access to the data of the row. So let's just see how it works. Let's type in here message box. And let's try this message box inside of our forest row in data table so we can uh, have access to the current row and then if we type here current row we are calling the row that it's being iterated so uh, for each row what will happen basically so let's just open the browser so first uh, this forest row in data table will iterate this row and then when it goes to the end here on the body, we'll, it will get the next. And so we will have access to this row and then next one, next one, until we don't have uh, more rows to process. So now uh, how we can get specific data from each row? We have to indicate basically the column name related to the value that we want to get. So let's say we want just to get uh, the name of each row. So we have here to open parentheses and double quotes. And then we have to indicate the column name. So as we can see here, the column name is name. So let's type in here name. And let's convert this to string. And now let's run our automation to see what will happen. So let's run our automation. And as you can see, we got so the name of the first row, so it's John. Then we got of the second row, Sophia, Peter, Diana, Robert, and then now our automation should finish its execution. So as you can see, we learn now how we can get specific data from each row. So let's delete this message box. So now uh, that we can iterate each row of our data table, 
we have to use activity that can fill data on each field. So let's click here on activities and let's search for the activity type it. And so let's drag uh, type int activity inside of our loop of our for each row in data table. And so this activity can input data on fields. So we just have to indicate to this activity where we want it to fill data. So let's click here on indicate target on screen. And now let's indicate here the field related to the name. So let's indicate. And now let's indicate and ensure so this activity can detect uniquely this field. So let's indicate here the label name. And now it's nice, so appears here a green. So let's click here on confirm. And now we should indicate what this activity should type on this field. So in this case, it's the name on each row, so the, uh, the value related to the name. So let's call here our row, open parentheses, double quotes. And so as we can see on our Excel file, the column name, it's name. So let's type in here name. And now dot to string. So let's test our automation to see if it's working well. So let's run. And so as we can see, our automation, it's working as expected. So now we just have to do the same to the other fields. So we need another two type into activities. So let's just copy uh, this activity. So let's copy. Now let's paste with control B. And now, so let's indicate uh, the second field, so the field age. And now let's indicate the answer, so the label age. And let's click on confirm. And so in this case, the column name should be age, as we can see. And now here for the last, so will be for uh, the field city. So let's indicate the answer. Let's confirm. And now here, so the column name uh, related to the value of each uh, city, so each city, it's the column city. And so now uh, what we have to do more. So after our automation inputs the data on each field, it should click here on the submit button. So for that, let's use the activities click after uh, the I type in the activities. And so now we have to indicate uh, the button to this activity. So let's indicate it. And now let's confirm. And so let's see what appears next. So. Let's here just type random data. Let's click on submit. And as you can see, after our automation click on submit, it should click also here on this link on where it says submit another response. Because if it doesn't click here, it will not be able to input the data of the next row. So let's add another click to click here so on this link and now so our automation should basically read the data from the excel file and export the data to this variable then open the browser on our web form and so for each row it should so basically fill the data on each field click on the submit button and then click so here on the link submit another response to be able so to input the data of the next row. So let's close the browser and let's run our automation. And so as we can see, our automation is working as it expected. So it's going through each row and so for each row, 
fills the data on the field name age and city, then clicks on the submit button and clicks on the submit another response so it can fill the data of the another uh, row. So I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more white path related videos. Bye bye.